So let's do a little recap of last time. Uh, had my second successful uh, net hack experience, successful in that I played for a while and then I died, but it went pretty hey, well. Surprisingly successful, I would say. Actually, yeah, so I, I, think I was Jeremy, impressed at how well you, your game went. I, I did pretty well, and you did a good job of teaching me and letting me make some mistakes as well, um, but experiencing some new stuff. So this time around, we are. Um, I'm playing with a new options menu set up for the first time, which I just uh, copied into a notepad file from you. You sent it over to me from from your options menu options setup. Is this the one you actually play with right now? Yeah, um, like I said, uh, I told you before that it's not quite. Um, it needs a little bit of modification. Um, some of the verbiage was changed, and some of these options are based on regular expressions. Um, so in three point six. You know, they changed a little, a few things, and I haven't gone back and actually updated and looked at what all those things are. So it's possible it's not going to be perfect in terms of what those are identifying. But, um, but yeah, no, this is what I played with. Uh, I actually also copied and pasted it a, a long time ago from um, one of the prominent players in the NetHack scene. Um, there's kind of some guys around that have done some pretty, like that are just sort of known in the community because they've done some pretty insane stuff. There's like mod who's a player who has beaten the game in insanely low numbers of turns like we're talking mm. you know 2000 something turns had they've completed the entire game which like when you when you first beat the game and you think about that number it just seems absolutely impossible so it's kind of cool um watching their replays and stuff like that so anyway i jacked i jacked it from one of those prominent players and have modified it over the years uh so I'm sure you can probably do the same if you actually get into the game. Um, there's little things. For the most part, it's just, uh, I find this to just be, there's nothing all that special in here. Um, I think you'll see when we start, it's just a little bit more convenient, especially in the menus and things like that. You can kind of see more at a glance. Just helping you highlight some details of what's what. And yeah, for the most part. And uh, I also have a couple of options here to turn on like uh, a little bit more information on the HUD. Um, you can see your experience rather than just your your experience level by itself. Mm, okay. um, little things like that. One of the things that I changed in the in the options, which is a big one um, that I was sort of surprised to see when you played last time, was already the case. Um, is I changed the character for boulders. You know, you know the boulder you were pushing. Yeah, it was up a, and, an uppercase O, right? Weirdly, in Rogue, uh, the, basically the entire series of Rogue, the default character for that is a a little backtick character, like the huh. like the reverse um, comma, or sorry, yeah. the reverse apostrophe, um, which is like such a weird choice for the Boulder character because it's not, it doesn't stand out and it doesn't look like a Boulder. Yeah, and almost universally, people change it to be the like the zero or the O key because that's what you think of when you think of Boulder. Yeah. Um, but weirdly, like that has never been the default option. But it looks like maybe in 3.6 they've they've changed it, unless that was just a nethack.alt.org uh, thing. 25 years of history down the drain. Very strange. <laughs> the Boulder uh, character. I've never understood it. So editing this file was actually pretty easy. Um, I hit O from the, the main menu once I was logged in to see my options file. Uh, I think you had me hit D to just like line clear a whole bunch of lines. And then I hit I to go into interactive mode and insert, yeah, yeah, and just uh, right click. Then it plopped everything in there, and then quit out. And that was that was easy enough. <laughs> yeah, it'd be even easier if you were running it, like if you were actually running NetHack on your Windows machine, because um, in that case it would just be literally be a file a in your file. kind of folder. Yeah, and you just edit it however you want. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to do before I started playing this time is increase the size of the window I'm playing in. I figured that'd probably be good for video purposes. Sure. Uh, um, is, is that something that I need to do like for putty externally or f is it for the game? So you can't, so NetHack has a very strict um, like horizontal and vertical character size. So you can't like, you know, Dwarf Fortress, for instance, you can You can scale. Set how many pixels, or how many, not pixels, but characters you want wide and tall, and then it will adjust everything based on that. NetHack mm -hmm. is very fixed. Um, the one thing that you can do is, in your putty settings, um, just as your application, you can just set the font size to be larger. Mm, um, okay. So that's one thing that you can do. Uh, but so other than that... probably quit out of here and then go into putty settings real quick. 
yeah, you might not even have to quit out. It might just be a, a view setting and putty. I, I, I'm on a Mac right now, so I can't check, but. Let's see, I'll go ahead and close the session real quick. Should be able to just reopen putty here. Uh, so let's see, window appearance, maybe. Uh, here's fonts. So right now it's 10 point courier font. Yeah, that's pretty small. So maybe bump it up to like 12 or like maybe 14 and just yeah, see what gonna, you think. I'm going to try 14. Yeah. All right, let's try that. That's definitely bigger. All right, let's play NetHack. <clears throat> Sweet. So um, why don't you try... Uh -oh. What's that? Oh, I got a, a bad option line. I think I may have deleted when I was putting in my name. Huh. Uh, let me go on anyway. Let's see. I'm going to restart. I think I might have deleted the first couple characters of name because oh, it okay. showed like the text me equals Azar. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I can show you how to do that. So if you go back into O... Is it hitting uh hitting I to Yeah, I and then press, you know, enter the NA. Yeah. Yep, that was easy. And then just press escape and then yep. uh colon WQ again. Already done. Cool. Okay. Hmm. Should I try a different race this time? Yeah, I would say actually choose a different class this time just to try something something else out. Let's see. I'm gonna be a barbarian. And so I, I noticed that I can only pick uh, human and orc. Can you be? Can you be a dwarf, or is that? You can. Yeah, you can. Certain certain classes have, like, how do I say this? Um, certain options cut off other things. So, like for instance, let's ah. say you play as a Valkyrie, mm -hmm. you can only be female because f Valkyries are female, basically. Um, and like classes will have certain races that you can only be with those races or gotcha. certain alignments um, can, you know, you can only be lawful if you pick certain races and things like that. So, um, yeah, but, but yeah, if, I mean, if I think one of the th cool things that NetHack 3.6 did is um, the character creation used to be a straight line. So you start at like, what class do you want to be? Then after that, it's what, you know, uh, race or whatever, I think, and then what gender or something like that. But in NetHack 3.6, you can actually select those in any order, I believe. Yeah, I noticed it had a, you could hit like a um, quotation mark or something to mm -hmm. s switch which thing you're picking first. Yeah, that's just to make it a little bit easier for the player who doesn't know what all of the kind of things that are going to be cut out by them choosing one thing is. Gotcha. I so I'm, uh, I'm going to be a chaotic female orcish barbarian. That sounds good. <laughs> Seems. Sounds like a winning combination to me. Yeah. I think it's probably going to go all the way this time. All right, I'm I'm watching your game now. I'm a newly trained plunderess. I've been heralded from birth as the instrument of Set, destined to recover the amulet for your deity or die in the attempt. Your hour of destiny has come. For the sake of us all, go bravely with Set. Uh, so you probably want to first thing just check your inventory to see what's different um, in your character. You can see right off the bat your strength is insanely high. Um, you were at like 10 before on your rogue and you're at like wow, 18. Yeah. Actually, 18 is the max value for strength or for any of your stats. Mm -hmm. um, so your strength and constitution and almost your decks are basically almost completely maxed here. You'll wow. see that strength has a slash 01. Um, just mm -hmm. a weird thing where it might be part of the old D&D rule set where basically strength can, even after you've completely maxed out to 18, you can continue to raise it, but it's, it's you know not quite as powerful as having a whole other set of strength, but basically you can infinitely, or for all intents and purposes, infinitely raise your strength even after you've hit 18. Gotcha. It's just not quite as powerful. For all of you Call of Duty players out there, it's known as prestiging. Oh, there you go, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sad that I know that. They actually Ooh. based that, the NetHack decision, or maybe even the D&D decision I heard was based on Call of Duty. Yeah, I that. I think that makes sense. Um, as we all know, Call of Duty has been around influencing <laughs> video games for decades now. Full moon tonight. So what, is, what does that mean? Is it just it, like it, kind of a little Nethack, sexier in here? NetHack actually has the concept of like moon cycle built into it. So depending, and not only really? moon cycle. 
other things, like for instance, you should never play Fr NetHack on Friday the 13th um, because your characters start with horrible luck oh, and shit. terrible things can happen to them. I so want to do that now. <laughs> Why isn't <laughs> it Friday the there's 13th? There's lots of right random now? things like that. Um, so I just pulled up the options, and yeah, this is uh, already looks very different with the the highlight for the weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can armor. see right off the bat um, what's what's actually held uh, by the fact that it's highlighted. Um, you'll notice that your your uh, certain items are highlighted in a different color. Your food rations are like a cyan color. Um, the reason for that is because they are identified as uncursed. Mm. Um, and this lets you see at a glance, uh, if you have something cursed, it will, it will show up as red. red yeah. And if you have something blessed, it will be like a light green. And so it's very easy to see kind of what your BUC status is just at a glance. Um, and if you don't see any color, uh, if it's kind of the default color, you know you haven't tested it yet. So, you know, you can avoid accidentally putting on some armor that you, maybe you should test first or something like that. Gotcha. Well, uh, also very noticeable, I have a smaller inventory than I did last time, for sure. Yeah, you don't start off with quite a, as much stuff, it looks like, but you do have lots of food to begin with, so that's really good. Yeah, four rations. Although yeah. I didn't get as hungry as I kind of expected to last time, I guess. Um, yeah, it surprisingly does um, catch up with you, though. I mean, you start to notice it a lot when you just don't... Sometimes you get unlucky and you just don't find any food, and, and you know, you're going to hit that hunger threshold and there's not much you can do about it. So I just looked at this uh, this bug that was next to me, and is the extra n uh, information in the brackets here also from the options menu? It might it might be, yeah. I it I says, can't remember uh, exactly what options those are, but I'm I'm normal normal or used to seeing those. Okay, yeah, because I didn't see these before, and it says scene normal vision infravision. So what does that mean? Um, I think it's telling you, I think basically it's giving you an idea of how you're seeing this enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense now, but it might later if you have more powers. Like if you're seeing something through the wall, um, or you know, maybe you are te telepathically seeing something, uh, it would maybe be a different description of how you're, how you're sensing that thing. Gotcha. Well, I made short work of those guys. Indeed. Um, so really quick, uh, one thing that you can do um, that, that you haven't done in any of your previous games, but you saw that you could do because you died on that bones level, is you can actually name your pet, um, which might just be a, a nice tutorial to see because that command is really useful. Um, if you do, I believe, I want to say it's um, capital C. Okay. If you press Checking capital this C, room. let's see what capital happens. C. So it'll Come give you a bunch of things you can do. You can name a monster, you can name a particular object in your inventory, you can name a type of an object, um, and the, the type of object is one to pay particular attention to because this is, let's say you've somehow figured out that like a blue potion is the potion of healing in your game, right? But mm -hmm. you haven't actually identified it yet. Well, you can just name it that, um, that, that type, um, and then it will basically be to you as if you've identified it because anytime you find a blue potion, it will just say whatever you've named it. So that's a very, very convenient thing if you somehow discover that without the actually gotcha. discovering it. You thing. haven't mechanically discovered it, but you've mentally exactly. discovered it. Yeah. Experientially and then the, discovered it. The, the difference between naming a particular object in your inventory is it will not name every item of that type, that thing, mm -hmm. just the one you happen to be doing right now. Um, and that's handy for... Uh, one of the things is, well, if you know an item is cursed, let's say, you can call it cursed, um, and it's not going to make every item of that type called cursed, just that one. Gotcha. Something uh, like that. Does my pet qualify as a monster? Yep. That seems a little harsh. <laughs> so you can now scroll over him like the far look and press a comma, probably. What do I want to call the kitten? What should we call the kitten? How about you have Jeremy? A cat? Okay, <laughs> that works. Uh, I, I do not have a cat. I had, had cats growing up, but not anymore. Well, there you go. I had a, a Kit Kat named by four-year-old Wes because <laughs> I was very creative. And, uh, Pretty clever, and, man. And then also, a few years later, we had Speedy. Also, mm. extreme, extremely creative name for him, but he lived up to it. <laughs> so, 
so uh, has has kind of talking me through NetHack a little bit um, gotten you in the mood to play it as well, or are you kind of getting a fix from just watching me play? I've been in the mood actually. I've been oh, yeah. I've been meaning to play more of three point six, but uh, I've just been busy and we haven't had the best setup at our house. Um, I I really need like. It's it's weird. Like I need to be comfortable when I play this game because the sessions can go for so long, mm. and uh, I haven't had like a desk set up for a while just because of, you know, we've been rearranging in the house. But no, I'm totally. I've been totally intending to get more into this. I get I, like, I get basically like the annual net hack pangs. Like at least once a year, I'm like, all right, it's that time of the year. I get the uh, this this image of you like getting everything together to prepare for this long session it's like you're in your bathrobe you've got your like <laughs> giant like 64 ounce bottle of of water and a in like a you know sippy cup to drink and you've got your your snacks of choice i don't know combos what do you what do you snack absolutely on? man cheez it's cheez it's there you go um yeah this game is dangerous for me actually i gotta be careful when i play it because i it's one of those games where like if you you know, you got a really good game going and it's like really late and you should really be getting to bed so you can get up for work the next day. Mm -hmm. But like, you don't, you know, you don't want to stop playing because it's just going so well. So there's a sink in the middle of this room. There is a sink. So I'm the, now standing you know, on the sink. The old, the old joke in there's hack sink here. was that hack was everything with, was basically rogue with everything but the kitchen sink. And so of course, Net hack took it a step further and so they that's just the sink. That's just there to be a sink. There's no can well, I wash just can like I wash everything else in that hack, it's got quite a bit of uh, mechanics and most of them are jokes. For instance, you know, the gag about losing a ring in a or the trope of losing a ring in a in a sink. Um, if you if you drop a ring down the sink, it will get lost forever and you'll never find it. Um, oh but it. there are actually benefits of doing that and it's a way to actually identify rings by dropping them down and observing the message of what happens when they get lost. <laughs> wow. That's really cool. And uh, you can also I, kick it and have stuff just, come up out of it. And there's all kinds of things you can do. Just realize I forgot my cat. There you are. Ooh. I'm, I'm bad about um, waiting for catching the messages like yeah there was just a message there but i oh yeah oh uh, i think so i was i might have just swapped places with the cat that was probably there's it. a command um to see the message history which is very useful uh ah. i believe it is control a maybe it's control a control a not shift a but control a is that not working maybe it's control p control p there ah. you go control p awesome what does the P stand for here? That's a great question. That Print the out. reason I didn't remember what character it was is because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder what that would be. Most of the most of the letters are pretty. Yeah, I, you know, explanatory. There's, there's probably an explanation. I just don't know what it is. And I thought you were an expert. <laughs> oh wait a second. You Did might I... be able to search there. Oh, oh there, there you go. go. You can get Ooh, through. Your rat. Not... Over overburdened. I am an orc carrying a battle axe though you would think i would be pretty bulky it's true so do you have a, a preferred race to play as um or, i do class? i do and i also have a race that i like basically a combination of uh race and gender and a class that i really really recommend for anybody getting started um but i think it's best before I tell you what that is, to just try some out and see how they are. Um, but there's one that's basically by far the most powerful kind of thing. Mm. Well, I'm, um, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of glad that I haven't started with that because honestly, like, I did, you know, decently enough with the with the rogue that yeah. it, you know, it didn't feel like I was just getting crushed or something. And rogue, yeah, rogue isn't necessarily a, like an easy class or anything. Um, in fact, I think barbarian is one of the better ones to start out with, just because it's so strong, and uh, it actually enjoys some other uh, perks that you might discover. The barbarian. Yeah, specifically, I believe the. I'm, I'm not sure if being an orc matters, but orc also has some benefits to it. Oh, an amulet. 
I don't think you found an amulet before. I do not believe I had. Let's see. Could be cursed. Who knows? Should I put it on? Or can you, you can wear amulets, right? Yep. You can. It's it would be a P, uh, like the ring put for jewelry. Ah, okay. P uh capital P, sorry. There we go. E. Whoa. Did I just turn into a man? You might have just turned into a man. Um is, <laughs> what is what would like is there like a status? Oops. Um, well, I see that you're now Azar the Plunderer and not the Plunderess. I guess that's pretty indicative. You became a man. That's something that can happen if you just put I'm, on any old amulet you find. I'm just sitting here processing this <laughs> for a little bit. I became a man so hard that the amulet disintegrated. So, so you've discovered the, the one and only, or one of the few ways to become a male Valkyrie. Oh, interesting. It is possible, but just not now, from character creation. Are there are there significances to to male female beyond you know class restrictions and there are very few. Um, it's it's a it's a not not a very sexist game, so it's not like uh, you know the Men females are strong speak and... or anything like that. Yeah, um, but there are actually a few. Um, the only ones that I can think of off the top of my head are extremely fringe, fringe cases of play. Um, for example, if you happen to be changed into a creature that can lay an egg, if you're female, huh. you could lay an egg. Uh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. I'm cool with that. I'm gonna let's see. I'm gonna eat one of my food rations. Because I'm hungry. He didn't say he was hungry. I just feel like maybe he's hungry. Oh, you you satiated your stomach. Mm, is that so good? You're actually satiated. I, you, have feeling, a you have a status effect right now. Feeling good. That was like that was a little bit of gluttony. I didn't need to eat. That's right. But just went for it. Good to try it out. Now, let's see. Is this some are these bars? They are bars. I guess I'm not going that way. Wait, Iron what's, bars. What's wow. this thing in the corner here? So I will say, Gem I've been playing NetHack for a long time, and I have never seen iron bars generated in a room in that way. Really? I think that's Just, a 3.6 thing. Huh. It, it looks like it's a, a... I guess it's not a window. It must be a doorway that I just can't pass through because there are bars in front of it. Yeah. Generally, iron bars, I think, are reserved for specific levels. Um Oh, I probably could have uh, thrown up right there if I tried. <laughs> that could have been fun. Some oh, hello. Two bugs here. All right, More grid bugs. Take them. Maybe I'll level up off one of these guys. Yeah, level two. Nice. Like so you'll see now that uh, you've one of the other things that the options did for you is your XP um, in your HUD. Uh, it has a slash and it actually shows you your actual experience point value in addition to your character level. That's really nice. Yeah, so you can see here that you gain you reach level two at level at twenty experience points, and that's always the case. The experience values are always the same. Oh, that's good to know too. Yeah. All right. I'm really bad at remembering my cat. <laughs> I see some armor. I think I feel like I'm wearing some pretty good armor. I wonder if it's going to be better. Let's see. Leather armor. I'm already wearing chainmail, I think. Ringmail. So this leather armor is probably not as good. Well, you're only at armor class 8, which means oh. you only have 2 points of defense right now. So I'm um, not sure. Maybe um, it's but... some really shitty armor then. But based on what happened to you last time, I might hang on to it until you have an idea of whether it's cursed. Identify it, yeah. yeah. I think everything I put on last... The ring wasn't cursed, but both of the armor... You had pretty bad luck. The armor and the cloak I put on were both cursed. Looks like 
Jeremy wants to go kill this newt gecko. You would want to kill a gecko, wouldn't you? I've killed my share of geckos. <laughs> so um, go back to that door real quick. Looks like you kind of hit a dead end there anyway. So you don't have lock picks, but you are a hulking barbarian. Ooh, um, there's a command for kick, which is just lowercase k. Um, you can try that out. Wham. Still locked. Try again. Wham. Still locked. Keep it going. There Ooh. you go. Sweet. That's like uh, some classic Ultima Underworld <laughs> level uh, emergent gameplay. Um, so can you can you uh, control P there for a second? I think I, I think I saw a shopkeeper message. Yeah, so there's a shop on on this floor somewhere. That's good for you. Um, so just this is just kind of a, a random aside, a um, little bit about game mechanics. Wait, where does where do you see? You hear someone cursing shoplifters. I don't see that. How it's do I not? Third see? line. Oh, would that just... would that be on this floor though? Oh yeah, yep. it is on this floor. Yeah, yeah that just right. happened. I was looking towards the bottom. Oh yeah, the, sorry. The newer the newer messages are on top. Yeah, um, that makes sense. So just a random uh, kind of game mechanic thing. Uh, it's impossible for a shop to be generated on the first floor of a of the dungeon. Yeah. Um, but after that, uh, going down in the main in the main dungeon. Um, there is the greatest chance for a shop to be generated starting at level two, and it basically goes down from there. So the deeper you get, the less likely you are to encounter shops um, starting at level two. That's cool. If that makes sense. Yeah. So basically, if you get really unlucky and you don't encounter any shops in the first you know, five, six levels, there's, you might just end up not having any. Hmm. That would be unfortunate. Whoa. It is, yeah. I just got hit by a... Whoa, two traps right next to each other? Oh, crap. They're actually invisible. Um, it, well, not invisible. They say I because it's something that you've sensed there, but you're actually blind right now. Oh, yeah. You're blinded. You can't see anything. Um, and you want to be careful because... Shoot. You also I... can't see your pet. Yeah. And so you will immediately try to attack your pet uh, if you can't see it because you're just swinging at it. So you might just want to try to get away if you can. Um, well, I got to move anyway, right? Yeah. So if I moved in the direction of it, okay. Yeah, so it looks like you stepped on a trap that blinded you. Yeah. Hopefully that won't last for very long. So if you can maybe just retreat to safety for now. You can't even see the path. You can press S to, to yeah. search around a little bit, but you oh, have to be crap. careful if you're also being attacked. Um, you I'm can guessing... be, yeah, you can be pretty sure if something's attacking you. Oh, there you go. It looks like yeah, you're blind. Yeah, there we go. But if something is attacking you, it's, it's not your pet. Not your pet. So, uh, it's just a bug. Your pet wasn't doing a very. Your cat wasn't doing a very good job of clearing out those enemies for you. Sure wasn't. Come on, Jeremy. Ooh, <laughs> okay, are these dogs? Yeah, jackals. All right, jackals. Is it a common strategy to fight stuff in corridors where you can limit the sure, direction yeah, of things absolutely. coming at you? I mean, obviously it doesn't matter for enemies that you can one-shot or whatever, but yeah, absolutely for harder enemies. I'm guessing there are some slightly tougher enemies I'll face at some point. Oh, yeah. Like red I mean, dragons. Like the red dragons, yeah. It's a good example. <laughs> They definitely killed me very quickly. Well, that was interesting. I got vision of this shop from pretty far away. Yeah, sometimes that can happen. Or I think I'm guessing it's the shop. I don't know if it is. Uh, I guess not. Just some gold. But the shop is on this floor somewhere. It's got to be. Not there. That connects back to here, I guess. Hmm. Oh, what was that? Hear some noises. Okay. Cool. Maybe that was that one enemy that I left alive. Hmm. Should I try to destroy this door again? 
Nice. You seem to do, be doing pretty well remembering the commands from last time. Yeah, it's not too bad. I I was a little worried when I started playing because, like, with Dwarf Fortress, I eventually got you know some of the more common commands down by memory pretty well. But yeah. If I waited, and if I had like a couple weeks between sessions, it was pretty hard to remember a lot of the sure lot yeah. of stuff. Uh, just because there are so many menus and sub menus and things like that, and they change with every version. <laughs> do they really? Yeah, a lot of them do. Some of the more standard ones don't. But I saw a uh, a comment from somebody recently who's a, a game developer, I think, um, who was who was kind of commenting on the oh, there's a dwarvish cloak here. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's commenting on the design of of Dwarf Fortress and how he thought it was an interesting example of uh, something I guess is fairly common in development, which is waiting to kind of polish your UI until later, like, until you're later in the game, which makes yeah. sense because like in Dwarf Fortress, if they designed the UI before they had functionality for tons of the different workshops and that kind of thing, then you would be like, oh, well, shit, we designed for this. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Small scale and I mean, and we couldn't do that. They so already his, hit. Yeah. Yeah. So his comment was they Dwarf Fortress was proof that you can actually wait so long too too long into development to the point where you just like can't fix the problem anymore. <laughs> and I don't you know, I have no idea if I. Well, you know, right, it's funny because but... they that happens anyway. Like they haven't they haven't spent any significant time on the UI, but I mean, they still have a UI. The game is usable. Um, and so that still happened. Like I said, stuff still changes between versions. You get used to where things are and it still changes around. But yeah, with Dwarf Fortress, I mean, that you can't talk about Dwarf Fortress in any way that's like a precedent for, or, or any kind of comparison with any other game because there's just no other game anything like Dwarf Fortress. I mean... A develop uh, the game is basically never going to be finished, right? Like it's a game that will just be infinitely developed, probably until Tarn passes away. Yeah, I mean, at this rate, you know, with the amount of effort and time that he's put into it already, and I think he considers the game to be like what forty percent complete now, or something. I don't, if that, probably his his version numbers uh, represent the the percentage of completion, and the current version is. 0.42 so he considers the game to be 42 percent complete but but that you know what it takes to get from one point you know 0.1 yeah. update to the next <laughs> could itself you know draw out uh in, infinitely i feel like yeah but i'm not complaining man i'm i'm uh i'm perfectly happy to have dwarf fortress as a thing that is always improving for my lifetime so it seems like you know NetHack by comparison. Well, for one thing, Chainmail, you know, hasn't been updated in a very long time until this recent update. Um, but it seems like maybe typically stays a bit more um, between between the updates. Things don't change as dramatically. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say just because it's so infrequent. But I mean, they have added pretty significant things. Like I said, you know, I guess I mean, like from a shops. from a usability standpoint, yeah, yeah, like the way but you I mean, interact also, with the game. Yeah, but NetHack is also just more of a fleshed out game experience rather than tr- trying to be like this huge fantasy simulator kind of thing too. So hmm. there's what? a ton of options, but still not anywhere near the level of complexity of command that Dwarf Fortress gives you. Where do you? Where the hell do you think this shop is? So I, my guess is that it you've you've you're very far to the right uh, in terms of what you've explored. It looks like there's still some area on the left for there to be map. So I might try searching around some of the left walls to mm. see if maybe there's a hidden hidden door, like around uh, here. Yeah, I mean it could technically also maybe be in the top right, but I feel like that's less likely. So maybe searching around these side walls a little bit uh, in both of these two rooms here. How many times do you typically search at a, a spot? Oh, you, um, you know, uh, depending. I would say maybe five or ten. Is is that um, is that affected by a stat like finding something? It might be. 
uh, like wisdom or something like that, but I'm not, I can't, I don't, I don't really know. It's not, it's not affected enough that it makes that much of a difference. Um, I've never really noticed too much. Found some gold in the fountain. Makes sense. And I mean, I'll throw a dime in the fountain, but I'm not throwing, <laughs> I wouldn't throw gold in it. All right. What's up, shopkeeper? I think they're technically Zork mids. It's, it's interesting that it says gold, but then when you're in the shop. Oh, maybe, maybe the currency itself is called Zork mids, but they're technically pieces of gold. Like gold that coins. makes sense, I guess. Let's see. So there's lots of books in here. Um, what was the other command? It was like, it was backslash, right? Yeah. And then backslash mm -hmm. again. And then I can just move the cursor around and then hit the comma. Yeah. All it's going to say though is scroll, I think for all of these, cause you're just observing it. You're not actually looking at it. I think if you want to see the price, ah. you have to actually go around and look at them. That's kind of annoying. Um, one thing that you can do, uh, it's not necessarily a it's not necessarily like something that you should always do, but one thing you can do is like if it, if it's a huge shop and you're going to go there multiple times, you could potentially like pick up all the items and drop them all in one space so that you can just see them all at once kind of thing. Mm, gotcha. Um, but yeah, I usually serious just shopping for them like this row by row or something. Um, so do you remember your discovery last game that could potentially be helpful to you this game? Yes, the identify scroll cost 27 Zork. Or at least very cheap anyway. They're yeah, not always, the game actually does, you know. Some, uh, some variation, that? variation in prices. It does, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't make it, it, it definitely knows that you will try to identify items in this way and it tries to throw you off a little bit, but for the most part, you can still figure it out. Well, that one costs 40, which I feel like is a pretty good... Pretty low, yeah. Pretty good bet. The cat keeps trying to steal stuff. What did he steal last time? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember. Maybe it was... Oh, it was another Identify scroll. That's right. I was all excited that he was going to steal something expensive and then he stole the cheapest scroll, which would have been really helpful if I had lived longer. See, that seems like it was the only one. A stained spell book. I wonder what it was stained with. Blood. <laughs> I want to know. Itemized filling? What does that mean? It was... Um... Okay, yeah, it is P, and then... I think it wants to know if you want to pay item by item. Or just pay for everything in one go. Okay. Oh, did I pick up another one maybe? Yeah, it looks like you did. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I want to drop that. Um, so one thing you can do since you're you you have some degree of confidence that with this that scroll that you bought is identify. Mm -hmm. Um, you can you can go ahead and use that uh name command to name that thing. Good idea. Um capital C. Capital C. Yeah. And then a particular object, or I could do all the objects, I guess. Yeah, that's what you'd want to do in this case. So, O, question mark, M. Let me get out of the shop here. Come on, cat, take something. I didn't steal. Hope for the best. Nope. Nope. All right. So should I re use this scroll on one of the ar pieces of armor, maybe? Could. I've got chain mail, a cloak, and leather armor. Mm. Um, can, you, can you press uh, Control-P real quick just, just to see your messages? I'm curious if you saw anything in there. Uh, no, I was just curious if you had any weird messages while you were in there as your cat was walking around. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, I didn't see any. All right. it's, is it R to read? Yeah. One scroll. Yes. Identify. I was right. Nice. Ooh. Oh, oh wow, snap. Wow, that is very lucky.
Oh, snap. Um, it's capital A, right? C. Wait. Oh, yeah. Take that off. Um, and then it's capital W to wear, right? Wait. Did I do weapons? Shift W. Awesome. So I just went from armor class 8 to armor class 3. That's awesome, man. Yeah, plus, plus 2. Oh, that's awesome. That's a really good find. Um, so if you press inventory now, you can see uh, it, it's even highlighted kind of that green color to show you super, that it's blessed. Super green. All right, time to go down the floor. Wait, are there two downstairs here? Um, I only, yeah, yeah, there's two. So it must must be that one leads to the uh, the uh, uh, a branching path like you saw before. Remember you ran into the gnomish yeah. mines? Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, if you type uh, pound overview, you, it might tell you already. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, whoops. Wrong one. Nope, it looks like you... So this is the answer to our question that we asked last time. It looks like you do have to actually interact with the stairs before it will tell before you... Tell you what it is. Review. Yeah, it's good to know. Let's try this one. Oh, look at that hidden door. Now, now I can do an overview, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, Gnomish Mines. So you're actually in the Gnomish Mines now. I feel like given how tough the gnomes who came at me were last time, and the fact that I'm only level two, maybe this isn't the best place to be. Yeah, you're also wandering around in the dark. You'll see. You can't really see. You don't really have much visibility. Oh, crap. This guy's attacking me. Let's get out of here. Now, what is this thing in the corner here? Fungus. I can probably kill the fungus. I don't know if I want to eat that, though. That seems dangerous. You said uh, the regular mold or... Lichen was kind of a standard food. Yeah, it is. But but I don't know about red mold. That seems <laughs> that seems dicey to me. That's probably a secret door there. But that's okay. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, let's see if I can usually, get... usually if a if a path connects to a room like that, it's usually the cat picked up the corpse. Search, hmm. search, search. There, there it is. You. Yeah. Now I gotta kick it down. So maybe it is wisdom. Um, you seem to be having sort of a hard time. Um, yeah. And you have low wisdom, so. A gas spore. Uh oh. Oh crap. Wow, that hurt a lot. But well, you level leveled up at least. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, you gotta watch out for those gas spores. They explode when you kill them. Lesson learned. Maybe I should like chill out a little bit and heal up some yeah you can you can actually afford usually that's not a very great idea but you do have enough food with this character to start that you're not too worried about going quickly so i could try eating the red mold you probably don't want to eat it now remember what happened when you tried to sacrifice um corpses go bad really quickly oh i think that was a, that was a new red mold oh was uh, it yeah is oh, that's not the one your cat up. has been carrying around like crazy? I think it's just carrying that corpse around. I, I just killed it again, so it was, oh, okay. it was definitely a new one. But, gotcha. But it's gone but Yeah, now, you do so. want to be careful about that. Oh, maybe it was the one he was carrying. Uh, not sure. My initial instinct, I'll, I'll follow it and not eat it. Spellbook, all right. An orange spellbook. Oh, am I going to be encumbered here? Books are actually quite heavy. Huh. Uh, that makes sense. Ooh. Chest. Uh, what was, was it O to open? Uh, loot. Ah. O is to open, but it's for doors only. Carefully open the chest. Let's look inside. An amulet of change. 
That's an identified amulet, which means you've used that's the same one that you found same one. earlier. So I could become a woman again. It it changed you into a, a man, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Nope. I want to take out the stones. All right, what can I drop out of my inventory? I should get rid of this orcish ring mail. Yeah, there's no way that leather armor is anywhere close to as good close as your chain as mail good. is either, so good you can probably get rid of both of those things. I mean, I guess I could try to sell them, but for now... You can always come back and pick them up if you happen to find a shop. That, you know, you can always go back for them. Which is really nice. I, I hate yeah. how many games kind of treat things that you put somewhere as just, you know, it disappears. It's gone forever. Yeah, no, I love that aspect of this game. Oh, what happened, Jeremy? Uh-oh, there's a trap over there where he was walking. Shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> he got teleported. Hmm, should I follow him? Could. I don't want to leave him. Oh, did I jump over it? I think it just teleported you to right there. Huh. Oh, so it didn't take me to the same place, I guess. Oh, Could try man. again. Oh, so maybe it just teleported him somewhere on the floor? Looks like that's the case, yeah. Do teleportation traps ever travel you between floors? There's a different trap called the level <laughs> teleportation trap. I can imagine those could be extremely frustrating. Hey, there he is. Those are the worst ones for um, the pacifist game because in the pacifist game, you have to rely entirely on a pet because you can't kill anything yourself. And uh, if you're down deep in the dungeon and your pet gets teleported to half the dungeon away from you... You're pretty much dead. Damn. I was just thinking uh, the fact that you could be, you know, really close to, you know, really far down, floors and floors down, and then accidentally get teleported, you know, way back and lose a ton of progress. It's not really losing progress, though, because like I said, it's it's actually very quick to, to travel um, even a long distance uh, once you've explored the levels. Right? But because enemies like, do respawn. They respawn, but not at a super quick rate. And typically, if you're down deep, um, you know, enemies are generated more difficult as you go deeper. And so if you go back up, it's going to be enemies that are easier than easier. what you've been fighting anyway. So that's not usually much of a problem. That makes sense. Ooh, okay, we got some enemies here. Is that a gnome? Behind this guy? Ooh, a shaman. I don't like the sound of that. Kobold shaman and a gnome. Oh, and I forgot my cat, too. I don't know if I want to fight him without Jeremy. Jeremy, I need you. <laughs> I'm somewhere. Yeah, I found him, and then he just didn't follow me. He's pissed for letting you walk, letting have it. You let him walk into that teleportation trap, man. It wasn't my fault. He did it himself. Ooh, yeah. There is a shop on this floor. Um, I couldn't figure out where the path was, so I. Oh, maybe it's right here. Could be. Could also be the left over there. Um, that path leading to nothing could potentially have a secret path on it. Yeah, I tried searching a little bit. Drink the water. Yeah. Nah. Nope, no shop here. Yeah, I'd search that left path. Where'd my freaking cat go? He might have went in the teleport trap again. Huh. I feel clumsy. <laughs> Looks like he lost the point of dexterity. 
because I haven't been fighting enough. I don't know. I'm not sure what exercises your dexterity. I can't remember. Uh, maybe try the maybe try the other balls. Maybe that one or interesting. Maybe even the other walls in there. There you ah. go. Oh, there's a kobold. Gotcha. Yeah, I definitely feel like my character isn't quite as accurate um, mm. as I was before, but it does help that I have some beastly strength behind me. So, probably a hidden door in here too, yeah. The level will basically never be generated in such a way that there's like half the dungeon is missing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's got to be a hidden door around there somewhere if that's the case. Did you just kind of discover that by playing a lot? Uh, yeah, I mean, it becomes obvious to you because you never, you never really see one like that. And every once in a while you do kind of get something that is... Uh, you do kind of get a, a floor that looks a little bit strange and it kind of throws you off, but it's usually pretty consistent. Ooh, there's a food ration. I don't really need to eat the dog when I can eat the food. So, so does a floor typically take up exactly one screen, screen worth of space? Yeah, there's no, su there's no such thing as like scrolling or anything like that. Um, and typically, the level generator will fill out the screen for the most part. That's, that's interesting. No, don't attack. So he's got potions, it looks like. Yeah. Mostly potions. It's, a potion. it's, it's very strange to see what appears to be armor in the potion shop. And there's a reason for that. Is it drinkable armor? <laughs> Ooh, strange object. Probably a mimic. Generally, if you see an item that doesn't belong, it's because it's a, a mimic trying to fit in and not doing so well. Well, I fought a mimic last time and it went okay, but I think I'll just avoid him this time. Fizzy potion, 200 zork mids. White potion, 75. So Do you have any potions you could maybe sell in here? Uh, I don't think I do. You have a magenta. Oh, I have one. Oh, yeah, I just picked that up a minute ago. Um, I mean, I can guess see I how much he'll give you for it. Yeah, I don't really need the money, right? I mean, what am I? I haven't spent too much, and I have mm. five hundred bucks, five hundred zork mids. Uh, how do I sell? You just drop it in the shop. You're not actually in the shop right now. You're in the doorway, so you should. Oh. There you go. Now you are. Hundred, so kind of middle of the road. I this game is like art, like a lot of other RPGs, though, where they will, you know, they'll only offer you a fraction of what. If you were to buy this potion, it would probably be more than that. Mm, then I'm not selling it. So in that case, you want to pick it back up, yeah. Yeah, I'll buy something. Wish he'd stop walking in my way. I just want to pick something up from him. I'll take a swirly potion. Sure. You can't go wrong with the swirly potion. I mean, it just it sounds delightful. Yes. All right. At this point, can you can you still remember? Um, like individual runs really clearly outside of, you know, very specific ones like, you know, your your winning pacifist run. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, they kind mostly, of mostly blur together. Mostly landmark runs, like when I made it to a part that I'd never made it before or if I found an item that I'd never seen before, some things like that. Um, but other than that, the games between them definitely do. All right, gnome, what you got? Oh, so I guess Jeremy followed me down here. And I didn't notice. 
the little dog bites. Ooh, do I have something that I could? Yeah, you could potentially ration, tame right? that dog. It's not tea for throw. Yeah, it is. It, but not for regular food, right? Oh no, I had huh? to. I had to go to the question mark to asterisk actually. Asterisk. That's question right. mark is the recommended items, which are usually like weapons to throw. That's right. Asterisk is you can throw anything. I'm gonna throw this one that may be cursed because be a good way to. Oh, you, know. you missed him! Oh crap! And there's a thing behind me now. A rove. What is a rove? I don't know, but it did quite a bit of damage to you. Fuck you, rove! You're dead. <laughs> You're dead. I'm gonna eat. You. I'm gonna eat him now. That's you could try again on that dog. Ultimate way to shame. So I just have to throw another ration at him? Yeah, I mean, you'll be able to pick up the ones that missed. They'll just be on the oh, floor. That's, that's good. And makes sense. But They'll have a little dirt on them, but it's okay. <laughs> I mean, I just ate a corpse of a thing that I have never heard of before. Yeah, I don't think you're... Uh, oh, Damn. man. You, you are an inaccurate bastard. <laughs> it, it must be the, the orc blood. All right, you got one more chance at this. Jesus. Is it, does standing closer to him help? It might. I don't know. He backed away. Uh, I can pick those up at least. All right, come on, dog. I just want to feed you. There you go. Sweet. Right directly into his mouth. Right in the face. You, right. waited, you waited for him to pant just right, and you tossed it right into his mouth. Now I should name him. Um, was it Control-C? Yep. Or uh, Shift-C. Shift 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 yep. Monster. Wait. Done? <laughs> uh, I think oh. it's comma. You might have pressed enter. Yeah, I did hit enter. I just I don't know what done means. I guess finish naming. What do you want to call a little dog? Uh, let's go Billy. I have some friends with a dog named Billy. Nice. Billy's pretty dumb. <laughs> so you want to keep your eyes out for signs of uh, potentially being in a bones file. Um because See, pet. seeing a pet animal like a dog uh, is something that would make me at least just kind of be aware that it could be one. It, it, it doesn't definitely does not mean that it is one because dogs could be generated anywhere. Mm -hmm. If you see one that's named like that well, last time we saw one called Wolf Wolf or whatever. Yeah, definitely a bones level. But in this case, you know, who knows? It could be, but it could just be a regular dog that was generated. But you do want to keep your eye out for signs of that because typically bones levels are dangerous because... Well, that person died there, so yeah. So whatever tell, killed them is there. Tell me a little more about how um, how bones levels work in terms of it's. So normally, when we're playing, this is not an entire dungeon that another player has explored. No, in no, the exact no. same so, configuration, is a bones level though, and that floor in particular is yep. identical to what someone has explored before. Exactly. So the way that the game is written is when you die. I mean. No, typically, in, you know, this game is not really intended to be played on a server in this way. It's just intended to be played on somebody's computer. And so this is just a way to transfer your, potentially transfer your game into future games. So every time that you die, there is some sort of chance that you're, it's not 100%, there's some sort of chance that your level will be saved when you die as a bones file. And everything about that level that you happen to be on right then um, including your corpse and whatever killed you and all of your items will be stored and later you can find them again. Um, and since you're playing on a server, those files are shared with every other player that's playing on the server. Do you think uh, Miyazaki played NetHack? <laughs> I on hope net so. <laughs> I don't uh, know if he played on this server, but uh, you know, NetHack is actually quite popular in Japan. Really? It is, and in fact, there's a samurai class that you can choose in this game, and when you do, all of the NPCs talk to you in Japanese, and uh, 
you have your own special Japanese names for things. So, you know, uh, food rations are not food rations anymore. They're something else. And are they uh, calorie mates? Your, your dog is named Hachi by default <laughs> and things like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I wonder how far back the, the fandom. For the I'm game not dates sure. Yeah. I would love to know the history. Um, I just know that, it, you know, it's, that's actually one of the regions that it's more popular in. Because J- Japan has a very different history with the PC than the yeah. US. And it's, it, it's been kind of, a, I guess, like an inverse relationship to... I, I guess the PC isn't as big in America as it was in the, I don't know, late 90s or something when you know, sure. the, the height of the PC boom. But in terms of games... PC games back in the you know the eighties and stuff were extremely niche, whereas in Japan that was like the biggest. I guess it was still niche, but it but for their PC scene that yeah. was the height of it is when they were making lots of text adventure games and stuff, uh, graphic novels that you yeah, could absolutely. do on a high res computer screen, but you couldn't do on a TV screen because just like the the um, pixel density or not pixels, but the the line density wasn't there you know, sure. was on those TVs. And then they all just moved to consoles. And then there was no more evil in the world. <laughs> and they didn't make any damn PC games for 15 <laughs> years, pretty much. Until we started finally getting them with Final Fantasy uh, 7 a little bit late 90s but that was oh shit dude yeah that was a thing oh fuck billy got hit by a rock and killed that was a rock trap i thought it was a pickup (laughs) no it's a it's the pickup of the rock that killed billy (laughs) billy is killed oh my god dude you we hardly knew him (laughs) i wasn't paying attention exactly well it's not like you could have done much it was a it was a trap so (laughs) And the tragic thing is he got me a scroll. He was just trying to help, man. He was trying to pay you back for that that food you uh, diligently kept throwing at him. Wow, that's really sad. Well, rip Billy. Rip Billy. I'm glad Jeremy didn't come in here. He could have could have died too. I think Jeremy's killed a few things. He's been around the block. He he's. I don't think he would die to a single blow to the head. It was, I guess, Billy was just a puppy too. He wasn't even, wasn't even a full-grown dog yet. Yeah, the pets get stronger as they kill things. You have to be a pretty tough cat to survive a hit from a boulder or a rock, though. I guess it could be a small, small rock. You smite the iguana. How do they smite it it without killing it? (laughs) It was a tough-ass iguana. It was properly smote. What is an N? A nymph. Oh, yeah, that's right. A wood nymph this time. The other one was blue, right? The water nymph? Yeah. Man, I don't like nymphs. You might be able to just avoid it. It doesn't look like it's following you just yet. Yeah, my nymph experience has been dicey so far you, every time. You might have been in better shape as a, as a woman. But now you've been turned into a man. She's going to seduce you again, man. What's with these killer bees? Uh oh. Oh no. But the poison oh. doesn't seem to affect you. Is that because I'm an orc? It's either because you're an orc or because you're a barbarian. Well, that's cool. I'll that's take either. It's a very handy thing. Poison can kill you instantly early in the game. There's a bunch of bees in here. All right, got that one. I assume they could be bad for Jeremy as well. (laughs) Jeremy's doing okay. Looks like I don't want to eat that. Might poison me. Well, I guess it couldn't hurt me, could it? You're immune to poison. Eat it. Uh oh. Well, all right. Just tastes terrible like everything else. I wonder how you prepare a bee to taste 
to taste better. <laughs> Dip it in chocolate. There you go. Um, yeah, you wouldn't cook it. That would be weird. I guess maybe you could like. You could Very interesting. It. What just happened there? Did you what see what you just found? The the doorway or in in that previous room. Um, I mean, I see a another stair up. Ah, so that could go to maybe the mines. Not sure. You have to check it. But first, you got to deal with this dingo. Kill this dingo. Okay. All right. Come on, Jeremy. Get your ass over here. A tripe ration. Are those all boulders? Those are all boulders. So you just found Sokoban for your first time. And it's what is Sokoban? It's the puzzle area of NetHack. Oh, sweet.